Hey guys, my name's Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So tomorrow the weather is going to be like little to no wind, at least first thing in the morning, like one to two mile an hour wind. It's going to be the perfect conditions to use the broadcast spreader to spread grass seed. We're actually going to try to overseed our hay field tomorrow. And uh, today I'm just getting everything ready so that I can jump on this first thing in the morning. So I made a road trip the other day to buy hayseed. This is all high quality hayseed. We've got a couple different types of endophyte free tall fescue. We've got meadow fescue, we got orchard grass. So I wanna take all this, I wanna see if we can get this all mixed together and basically make our own seed mix up and then see if we can get it put in the hopper. I'm gonna guess that's probably gonna fill that up about halfway, but once we get that done, we will be ready to spread this on the hay field first thing in the morning. So if you guys have been watching the channel for a little bit, you've probably seen me use this cement mixer before to mix up grass seed or pig feed. It's been a long time since I've actually used it for concrete. I'm basically just gonna throw in a few scoops each and mix it up. One time I actually tried weighing it out. That's way too much effort. This is an old mixer. You gotta kinda help it. So what I've found, the easiest thing to catch this in is a galvanized trash can. <gasps> And then I uh, screw up my dump sump. After I say it's the easiest, I dump it. Go figure. That's what I can do without spilling it. There it is, 150 pounds of grass seed. So this is more seed than I should need to put down on the hay field. Um, I have extra here just in case. These broadcast spreaders are kind of tricky because it all depends on how you set the opening on the spreader, but it also is very dependent on the speed of the tractor on how fast you're going through the field. So I've got extra just in case, but hopefully there'll be uh, somewhere close to 50 pounds left over, I hope, and uh, we'll be able to spread that onto the pasture, but we'll just have to wait and see. So it's the next morning, and it is a beautiful day today. No wind whatsoever, perfect day for this. So the, uh, the spreader says it will spread grass seed basically 25 feet wide. Now the trick will be, we wanna go up and down this field, and we wanna go every 25 feet. That way we don't overlap and waste grass seed or go too far and we have strips that we completely miss. So I saw something on farmer Tyler Ranch when he was working one of his fields one time. I'm gonna try to do like a variation on that. So he, I think he used like little white sandbags and he spaced them every so far apart at each end of the field or every so often in the field. And that gave him something to aim for. So he knew he was going in a straight line and he knew he was going the right spacing. Well, I don't have little sandbags if that's what he used, I can't remember. But I do have a bunch of these step-in posts. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can see these from a pretty good distance, especially because they stick up so far. So I'm gonna space these out every 25 feet and uh, put them down each end of the field. And then once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and start, space, or, uh, start spreading out this grass seed. All 
All right, I've got all my posts 25 feet apart. My plan is to drive on the north side of each one of these posts as I go back and forth down the field. Now, the field is triangular, so this is a little bit tricky. So this post here ends up lining up with the end post back there, and this is like a big triangle at this end. So I had to come forward and lay another line of posts to go across. So basically this is gonna get smaller and smaller as we move this direction. So I'm going to a lot of extra effort this morning to make sure that we put the grass seed down evenly. Plus I've got everything set up where I think we're gonna put down the proper amount, or at least the amount I wanna put down. So it's set up for 35 pounds an acre. And um, to do that, we've gotta drive at seven miles an hour. So we're gonna be driving through here at a fairly good speed. And hopefully when we're done, we're gonna have about a third of that left in there. Well, I was able to go over the field almost twice. So definitely was spreading a little bit thin. I'd rather go over it twice than just once anyway. So I was over to, to go on the south side of all the posts and kind of overlap everything a little bit. But you can see we still got quite a bit of grass seed in here. So I think I'm gonna go over a couple more times and uh, we'll move on to the pasture. All right, we got all the grass seed spread out. And uh, obviously I think I was going too fast because we were able to go over the field twice. And then I went to the pasture, I slowed down a little bit. And after I got it done, I still had enough grass seed that I was able to go over this one more time. So this hay field has been gone over a total of three times. I slowed down the last time, but uh, I would rather do three passes than one because I know I've got fairly good coverage of seed on here. So I am glad that we got this done in February. February is almost over, but this is considered frost seeding and you want a lot of freeze and thaw cycles left. So every time it freezes and thaws, it's gonna help work that seed into the soil a little bit and it's gonna help the chances of germination. So definitely wanted to do it in February. I wish I would have done it about two weeks ago, but we should we should have plenty of cold weather left to help work this in the ground. So I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is my dad's spreader. So I was able to borrow this off of him. So my only cost was the cost of the seed and the fuel to spread it. Now I could have done this totally differently. I could have rented a drill 
um, that was specific for grass seed. If you can get one that's specific for grass seed, a lot of times the spacing of, it, of how it plants will be a lot tighter together. But then you would have had a rental fee included, but you would have spent less money on grass seed. It wouldn't, you wouldn't have had to use as much grass seed. Um, in the end, that probably evens out, and this is just easier to borrow this and not have to mess with trying to rent something. So that's the reason I went this way. And hopefully all of the seed, or not all the seed, but hopefully a, a good portion of the seed will germinate and come up in the spring. And uh, the plan is we're, we're gonna fertilize this field this year. And hopefully that's gonna help that grass grow and get established so that uh, so the hay field looks nice and good, hopefully. Um, I still need to do a soil sample, so I'm gonna go around take soil samples from this hay field, the other hay field, our pastures. I'm gonna send those in. And then once that comes back, we'll know exactly how we need to fertilize the field. We'll know what's missing, what we need to add. And then we'll also know if the pH of the soil and whether we need to add lime to the soil. So that is the last, I mean, that's really the only thing left that I need to do in preparation for hay season is basically just get a soil sample and get this fertilized after the, the grass starts to grow. But I think that's gonna be it for this video, guys. So um, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.